These are my friends. I call them my friends at uh, Pro Football Focus. And you're loving them. I tell you what, they come up with a lot of content though, nice. this time of year. That's like, good. We need, that. Need, we need, need that. They like to rank their positional groups and stuff. Like you've got the rankings. running back. Remember, I told you that the running back room was the 32nd ranked yes. running back room in the league. 32 out of 32, huh? 32 for the Cowboys. Out of two. Yeah. Which they probably got right. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just crazy some of the disrespect these guys get, though. Wow. Well, like, how are you going to do that to Royce Freeman, Deuce Vaughn, Rico Dowd, and Ezekiel Elliott? I don't know. I think what you just did, though, is you put a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. I these guys so are about too. to run the hell out of the football. We're about to get 2016 Zeke. Zeke's going to be, in, in, I mean, at least 400 yards on the season. 400 yards? Minimal. Okay. I might double up, say eight. Mm. All right, now you've gone too far. You think so? But you guys, you, you, you think that's legitimate though, right? You would yeah. say, yeah. I mean, we, I okay, think that's we fair. cover this team, we cover this team, but we watch a lot of other teams play. A lot of unproven uh, yeah. outside of Zeke, and you also have a guy that is kind of in the twilight of his career now, so yes. Is that the position you're most terrified of right now for the Dallas Cowboys? Why is why is three technique defensive tackle? Oh, that's three, that's oh, one the one I'm, I'm most one terrified of. It's defensive tackle, yes. Yeah. I mean, even behind Osa at three tech, I mean, I think that yeah. we've got some big questions. I think small, just like small picture here, I think it's actually the the tackle spot, the left tackle spot. You just, the unknown there, just, right? Yeah, like how how quickly is Tyler Guyton stepping in being the man? Or do we have Chuma Doga starting? That's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, I don't know, but like yeah. I think in the, in the immediate, your left tackle being a problem is much worse than your running backs being a problem. I guess my, like, I just trust them. Like, they've hit on all these offensive tackles that yeah. Tyler Guyton's going to be okay. And in a pinch, if it's really that brutal, you can put Tyler Smith there and you'll be all right. Yeah. For sure. But now, but but again, see what you've done. Now it's, things are shaking up. Who's your left guard? I guess it's Bass. Yeah. That's Bass, Bass or Bass. BB. Maybe BB. BB, yeah. Like, I think you're okay. Guard. Unless BB's your starter. Center. center, which I mean, I think you should be. We'll see. That, that's going to be one of those. We're going to get out to camp, three live mics, and it's going to be like, uh, well, there, you know, it looks like to me that Brock Hoffman, you know, it's like practice after practice. After well, that's practice. how it was for Tyler Smith's rookie. Year. Oh, I know. We it, kept it, it, going it, out there going, wow, Tyler it, Smith is not getting just any. Yeah. He's just not even being well, considered for first team. You always, this is where you worry about the coaching staff. All right. I brought up the, the my concerns about the one technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is Pro Football Focus's rankings, 1 to 32, of the defensive line. Full Okay, full, full defensive line. Full okay. defensive line. All right. The number one team, would you like to take a guess, just a guess, just throw out a name, of the who they have as the number one ranked defensive line in the National Football League? Oh, and man. San Francisco always comes to mind. Yeah, they'll be number two. Okay. They'll be number and two. And they lost Eric Armstead. Yeah. They'll be number two. I mean, I, it's crazy to say. I think the Texans are doing something pretty I nice. I like what right the Texans have done this offseason. Some of the stuff they've Texans, done. Texans, you say? They've added an interior D line. Yeah. Willie, got anything? Uh, how about. I mean, I, I, I really hope Philadelphia is not this high. They're number three. Philly? Yeah. Damn Maybe. Damn. Is it Cleveland? Cleveland. Yeah, Cleveland's got a good defensive line. Cleveland is Cleveland's in this mix Pittsburgh? right now. Pittsburgh? Cleveland's number five. Are they including the two outside linebackers with the Steelers? High Smith and Watt? Uh they're actually they're number eight. Okay. So we're dancing all around this thing. Yeah. If you if, would you like me to tell you who number yeah, one is? Yeah, tell us who it is. New York Jets. Oh, okay. Oh, son of a gun. Yeah. yeah. The Jets do have a damn good defensive yeah. line. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, if, uh, if assuming Hassan Reddick, Reddick's playing. Yeah, Reddick. Not cosplay yeah. Yeah. in Japan. Yeah, Quinn and Williams is one of the best and most disruptive defensive linemen in the league, making the Jets as good as they get on the defensive line. So they're talking about Hassan Reddick and Will McDonald, who we liked coming out. Remember him coming out? Of Iowa I was State. a little lower on him than I think of the rest of the group. Yeah, but yeah, he's as, got talent. As okay, so the Jets are the best. Jets are the best. San Francisco's number two. Okay, in this list, even losing Eric Armstead. It's, yeah. yeah. Philadelphia Eagles are number three, according to Pro Football Focus. For the first time in a while, the Eagles have some questions along their defensive mm -hmm. line. The depth is still outstanding, but it isn't as proven as it's been in the past. Jalen Carter was a dominant force out of the gate as a rookie before coming, uh, cooling off in the second half of the season on his way to an 87-4 grade overall. Bryce Huff is a significant addition, but may not be an upgrade over Hassan Reddick on the edge, while young players like Jordan Davis and Nolan Smith need to establish themselves as the dominant forces, the players they are replacing in the past. So Eagles, number three. Detroit Lions, number four. 
Yeah, Aiden Hutchinson, and they added a defensive tackle, Lee McNeil. Yeah. Yep, sure did. And uh, DJ Re uh, Reader. DJ Reader's who they DJ. added. Yeah, 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 was there. Yeah, yeah. And, and McNeil's underrated. And Perth, I don't know why yeah, I thought the Texans yeah. added Reader. Yeah, Marcus uh, Marcus Davenport as well. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Hutchinson has been outstanding. You're talking about a yeah. Michigan guy. He's turning it on. Michigan guy that, that he, he looks like a, a real player in that place. We mentioned Cleveland is number five. Is Cleveland too, too uh, is that too low for Cleveland considering the, the four I'd said before? Do you think you, you guys like what what you got with Zadarius Smith, Dalvin Tomlinson? Think like that or Miles Garrett? Yeah, I mean, Garrett? obviously Miles Garrett's doing a lot of heavy lifting there, but they they were pretty dang stout last year, and Zadarius Smith had an awesome season. Yeah, I mean, I think the team that's kind of being it's just like track record is the Niners. Like why they're this high? Like right, they've got Chase Young, Randy Gregory, Cleveland Farrell, Leonard Floyd. And these Did are they all move on from Randy Gregory. Why did I think Randy Gregory he got, went to Tampa Bay? Yeah, that's he got right. Moved, got yeah. moved on. So yeah. they've got yeah, a lot Leonard, of guys. Leonard like, Floyd's a decent little ad there on the edge, trying yeah, to go they, opposite uh, Bosa, but Malik. Yeah, Collins, I hear you. They traded for. Hmm. You know, I think they lost a little bit there with uh, losing Eric Armstead. But yes, I mean, I, I think Cleveland could be ranked higher. Cleveland's got a really good defensive line. All right. If you were to say who is number six, would that be the Dallas Cowboys or the Indianapolis Colts? Mm, Colts have a much better interior. I do know that. Yes. Cowboys probably went on the edge. Yeah, because I think uh, the Cowboys had the best edge duo in PFF's rankings. We talked about that with Parsons and Tank. So I think that'll probably put the Cowboys over the top here. Yeah, that's probably fair. Because it's DeForest Buckner, right, with the Colts. You guys sure about that? Yeah, I'll, I'll go with the Cowboys here. I'll just go Devil's Advocate, sure. Give me the Colts. It's the Cowboys. <laughs> This is what they say about the Dallas Cowboys. Number six, huh? Number Damn. six. And 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 honestly, the loss of some depth there. Yeah, I think that's high. That seems a little high for me, but that's why I was like surprised. I'm like, maybe the, maybe this group is better than what I think it might be. Well, I think Osa is really, really good. And I think I Osa too, played fantastic for 12 last games. year. Yes, and then faded. But it's also because he's got no help. Yeah. That's all this team cares about, man. 12 games. Just go get, just go play 12 good games. Yeah. And that's all we care about. Doesn't matter. Cowboys, this is what they say about the Cowboys. An elite player will take you quite far on the defensive line. And right. the Cowboys are a Hot this high thanks to Micah Parsons, who ranked uh, uh, racked up, excuse me, 103 quarterback pressures in a regular season a year ago. Demarcus Lawrence also earned a 90 plus PFF grade thanks in large part to his run defense, but Dallas is lacking depth of the teams above them, and in that particular need to see growth from second year nose man Mozzie Smith. Mm. Is he the biggest question mark? Okay, you mentioned the left tackle. Is the left tackle more of a question mark than what's going on at one technique with Mozzie Smith? Uh, it's, <sighs> I think you, that you've seen, you're more concerned with Mozzie because it's like you've had a full season to right. try and figure this thing out. And the Cowboys do have a pretty good track record at getting these offensive linemen squared away decently. Yeah. So they're both big question marks to me, but I'm more optimistic about Tyler Guyton just because he hasn't given me reason to feel like he can't get it done. Mozzie Smith has now done that. Yeah. I yeah. saw the cringe over there. What happened? I think it is Mozzie, man. I just think there's so much unknown with him right now. He's come first off. I mean, he, he had to have surgery this off season. Sure. You've got the weight stuff. Mm -hmm. We know about the mental makeup. You know, yeah. I mean, he he's a guy that beats himself up. He's hard Quite on himself. Bit, way hard on himself. Getting a new defense in here that he's got to learn, which doesn't seem like it's super easy. So I, I I'm I'm nervous there. I, I do have a lot of questions and concerns. I mean, yeah, obviously a rookie left tackle. There's going to be questions, but. Yeah. But Gosh, Mozzie like didn't answer a, a damn thing for us last we year. We do feel like he's in better hands, though, yes. with this, with this team and this coaching staff. Absolutely. Hopefully so. Okay, yeah. Uh, that Colts, seven. Steelers, eight. Uh, let's run through. Vegas Raiders are nine. Okay. And your Houston Texans, number 10. And Houston, right, cool. I, I'm with you, man. I think Houston's going to end up moving up these ranks. I do well, too. they brought in a big guy. But I'm just trying. I can't remember which. I thought it was DJ Reader. I thought it was Reader, too. Daniel Hunter. Daniel Hunter was their edge. But yeah, they brought in, I thought they brought in a, well. a big dude. They did. Mm -hmm. They thought did. they did. We'll figure out who that is during yeah, the Yeah, we will. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. I'm all over. Crusty's Corner every day at 245-ish right here in the G-Bag Nation.